mayor is urging people to stay in their homes until the National Guard can control the situation. But looting and hysteria escalates as rumors of the dead returning to life as murderous cannibals continue. We go now live to Lucy. <laughs> Oh God, oh God, this is really happening. This is the end times. The dead are consuming the living. We're all fucked. Yes. James, what's gotten into you, son? Didn't you hear? We have to stay inside. Those, those things are out there. Look, asshole, just because you wasted your life going to college and racking up student loan debt, doesn't mean that I have to. I'm not your fucking failure surrogate. Language, young man. Are you, Are you fucking for real? This is the new world, Mom. My world. You fucking dinosaurs either need to adapt to it or go extinct via a one-way ticket through a zombie's asshole. Quite frankly, I don't give a shit what you choose, as long as you stay the fuck out of my way. What's gotten into you, son? <laughs> you think I spent all that time playing video games just to get away from you two dipshits? Ha! Cometh the hour, cometh the man. And I'm going to come it hard. James! Wait! James is dead. Just like the old world. You can call me by my gamer tag now. The one they know and fear online. The name's... Jimmy Headshot. Time to go to school, shit fuckers. Now see here, Mr. Uh, postman. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave the mail in the box at the end of the driveway and uh, leave, please? Oh God, do something, honey. I am doing something. I'm giving him a piece of my mind. And I'm taking that piece and shoving it up his ass. I already told you, it's Jimmy. Don't make me say it a third time. You killed that man! Well then you two have something in common, because that wasn't a man either. Now listen up, bitch. It's time to stop whining about your erectile dysfunction and take care of business. Because next time, I might not be here to save your sorry ass. That's it, enough of this foolishness. Get back inside, now! When I want your advice, old man, I'll come to your next AA meeting. Jimmy, please! Please, thank you. None of that pussy shit has any place in my world, Mom. But I'd be more than happy to take out the trash. Oh my goodness. Mom? Come on, Jean, get inside, quick! They never learn. Oh God, Mom! No! You might want to go back inside, Mom. I'm about to make it rain.
No can do. He's been bitten. But, Jimmy, I'm your father. Re remember when I got you that skateboard for your 10th birthday? Yeah, the one with the ponies on it? It sucked. I, I don't want to die. You were dead the minute you stepped out the front door. Sorry, Dad, but you're about to go from head of household to headless of household. No! <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jimmy. This is fucking Cooter Scouts, not a fucking therapy circle. Yeah, dude. You got some serious issues. Fuck you, no I don't. <laughs> Headless of the household? I pulled better puns out of my cat's asshole. Yeah, along with your tongue. You know, it's my story. I say it's badass. Yeah, but it's also bullshit. They're supposed to be telling real ghost stories, remember? That's what makes them uh, scary. You guys don't know that it didn't happen. Um, yeah, we do. One, I think we would have heard about a zombie apocalypse. And B, you're kind of a... Let's see. <laughs> yeah, man. Nobody calls you Jimmy Headshot. More like, uh, Jimmy... Cuckold. <laughs> Fuck you, Darnell. They respect me online where it counts. Well, my daddy says people who are on the internet too much have poor eyesight on account of all the masturbating that they do, you know? And he says that their only chance of getting laid is down in hell when Satan cornholes them for all they sins. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Buick, you sure know how to kill a conversation. Hell, she, she probably ain't wrong. Fuck this shit. Where's Scout Leader Gary? He was supposed to pick us up by now. He said he was going to get his pizza. <laughs> we'll be lucky if that cycle comes back with gonorrhea. Whoa! Darnell! Gordon, that's nothing to joke about. Plus, it's pronounced gonorrhea. It's Italian for sex disease. What? The last time Scout Leader Gary took us camping, he left us in his car outside of a fucking strip club. The asshole was gone over 12 hours. I mean, guys, this isn't exactly a step up. We're in the parking lot of a sex shop. Guys, you know how it is. It's like this every year. I mean, face it, the only reason people join Cooter Scouts is because they're dirt poor. Or their parents hate them. Not me. Perfectly good troop in my neighborhood. What? Oh, no. Mother says I must mix with the whites. It's those fucking SJWs. Right? Well, well my daddy says I gots to be at the house on Friday nights. That's his special alone time with the needle drugs. Jesus fucking Christ. We are too old for this. We are too old for scouts. We're too old for fucking ghost stories. And we are too old to be playing teenagers. Look, we need something to take our minds off how sucky this camping trip's turning out to be. Come on, you fuckers shit all over my story. See if you can do any better. You know, I got one. Oh yeah? Like Jimmy? No. It's not like Jimmy's. Not some weird story about having oedipal feelings for my parents. This actually happened. Oh yeah? Yeah. 
Do you guys remember that one summer? You know, I started wearing girl jeans. I had all those frilly shirts. My theater phase. Yeah, that was an uncomfortable summer. Well, this really happened to me. It's totally true. Will, is that you? Yeah, Dad. It's me. Well, you don't sound too sure about that, bud. How'd the open mic go? Terrible. The audience only laughed once, and that's because... I tripped on the way to the stage. Well, comedy's hard, bud. I don't know what to tell you. Have you tried slam poetry? I don't even know what that is, but it sounds awful. Well, maybe you need a new gimmick. I mean, you've been doing this whole weird, awkward loser bit for a while now. Dad! This isn't a bit I'm doing here, all right? This is me, your son. Hey, it's nothing to worry about, bud. There are plenty of famous funny weirdos like, uh, Chris Farley, Robin Williams. Oh, yeah? What happened to them? Oh, they died tragically and young. They had depression. Chris, uh, died alone and Robin killed himself. <laughs> funny though. Very funny. Yeah. Funny, Dad. Um, you think maybe I can make people laugh without becoming a tragic cautionary tale? Is this really what you want, Will? I mean, seriously? You don't want to be a plumber or a truck driver or anything else? No, Dad. You know this. This is what I've always wanted. I want to be on stage. Okay. Did I ever tell you about your great-grandpa? He had an act once, and pretty good by all accounts. I knew it. I knew this stuff was in my blood. Why didn't you ever tell me about this before? Because I need to know that I can trust you. That you can be responsible. Uh, yeah, Dad. I'm very responsible. So I'm going to show you something. It's a bit of a family secret, and, uh, it may shock you. Yeah, sure, Dad. No problem. Jesus, jumping Christmas, Dad! What the hell is that? What? I told you to be prepared. Yeah, well, I didn't think you were going to... Pull a weird, creepy ventriloquist dummy out of your butt. Is it creepy? Yeah, Dad. It's really creepy. I guess I could have cleaned it up a little bit before showing it to you. I seriously thought that was like a toddler corpse or something? Like you killed a toddler and then fashioned a little suit for it and tie? And... A toddler? Why would a toddler... Have a monocle. I don't know, Dad. I mean, some toddlers could have monocles. Like, they had, like, astigmatism or something. I I don't know, Dad. This is super confusing. Well, I take it by now you guess what your great-grandpa did for his act. Yeah, scare the poop out of little kids? No, well, maybe a little. He was a ventriloquist. Not a small-time one, either. He toured all over Europe, was on the radio and everything. And radio was very big back then. See? Billy Monroe? That's great grandpa. And private sloppy? Why private? Well, they toured a lot during the war, and, uh, I think there's an innuendo there. What's a... innuendo? Uh, never mind. So, what do you think? Give it a try? So, I mean, he just had this thing, like, lying around? Yeah, I guess it's an heirloom or something. I didn't have the heart to put it on eBay. And you never, you know, like... Gave it a shot? 
Well, my, uh... Do you remember your grandpa? I mean, kind of. I remember that one Christmas when he pooped himself. Totally ruined the pork dinner. Well, anyway, he wasn't the most supportive. I think he was ashamed of his old man. I remember being a kid and I saw this dummy just sort of laying around one day and I went in to ask my dad about it. I thought it was a present. And he just went nuts. He really gave me the third degree. He told me not to waste my time with nonsense. And... Got it here? <laughs> dad, I could see your lips moving. <laughs> well, I guess it takes practice. What do you think? Give it a shot? Yeah, Dad. Sure. Hey, Mr. Sloppy, what do you have to say to the boys and girls in the audience tonight? Because open mic night's tomorrow, and it might be old Willie Boy's last chance at stardom. <laughs> I think you're a piece of shit. Yeah, me too, Sloppy. This is harder than it looks. Hey dad, I'm going to bed now. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, I brush my teeth. I'm not 15 and a half anymore, okay? I care about dental hygiene. Okay, good night. Calm down. What's your problem? Some people like being tied to chairs. You have to keep an open mind about these things, Billy. I'm just a magical talking puppet. Nothing creepy. Oh, right. The gag. I need you to promise me that if I take that out, you won't scream, Billy. I was friends with your great-grandpa. Me and your family go way back. So can I take that gag out, Billy? They're just some panties I found, Billy. I needed something to gag you with. Panties? Ew, are those my mom's? Yes, they're your mom's panties, Billy. What would you have me do? Use your own? It's not as if they're even dirty. I couldn't find any dirty ones. Why didn't you just, like, use one of my socks or something? 
I don't know what you do with your socks, Billy, but I know what I do with mine. If someone was kind enough to give me a choice between being gagged by my own socks or your mom's panties, I know which one I'd choose. I feel like we need to get past this. What? What do you want from me? I just want to be your friend, Billy. I've been trapped in a box for decades, and I need a friend. I want that friend to be you. Why me? Because you remind me of your great-grandpa, Billy. He and I were the best of friends. We had a lot of adventures together. Traveled the world. We were the best of friends. And I remind you of him? Yeah, of course. You ever get on the stage, Billy? I bet you own the stage. It's in your blood, kid. It's not what the audience at the open mic thought. Well, if they had any taste, they wouldn't be at an open mic night, right? That's fair. You take it from me, kid. I got years in the biz, and I know talent when I see it. All you need is the right outlet. And me! I'm the guy who'll get you there. Really? You mean it? Sure, why not? I did it with your great-grandpa, and I could do it with you. Easy. We'll break out the old act again. What do you say? But... Why? I mean, what's in it for you? I'm a magic ventriloquist dummy, Billy. I ain't got a lot of options. I won't lie to you. I need this. I need you. We could be really something if we joined forces. We could be famous. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna untie you. But here's the thing. You can't go around telling people about me, Billy. Not even your parents. Nobody likes magic. It makes them edgy. They'll want to cut me up in a lab and find out what makes me tick. Because when I tell people I was cursed by a wizard's ghost, it just brings up more... It just brings up more questions, Billy. Questions that make people uncomfortable. Can I trust you not to tell on me, Billy? Wait, you were cursed by a wizard's ghost? That's not important right now. All that's important is that you trust me. Okay, fine. What do I do? First thing I need you to do, Billy, I need you to put your hand up my ass. What? Now that's a perfectly normal response, Billy, and I respect it. There's gonna be people you meet in life, and they're gonna ask you to put your hand in their asses, and you can't trust all of them, Billy, you can't. But you can trust me. I'm a ventriloquist dummy, Billy, and without a hand in my ass, I'm nothing less than nothing. We need to get past this. We need to not make this weird, okay? Okay. All right. Are you sure there isn't another way to do this? You think someone wouldn't have figured it out by now, Billy? This is just the way it is. I don't like it any more than you do. Now come on, get your head in the game and your hand up my ass. Okay. Here it goes. Uh, 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 it's warm. It's warm. Uh. Of course it is, Billy. It's my ass. Why wouldn't it be warm? Now, come on. Don't pussy out now. Uh, that's the spot. Hey, what are you, what is that? I didn't say anything, Billy. Now don't stop, I'm almost there. What? <laughs> I said you're almost there, Billy, just one little push. Uh, is that it? Not quite, Billy. Now I need you to spit in my face and call me a bitch. Uh, I... No. <laughs> Jeez, kid, the look on your face. Can't you take a joke? This is comedy, Billy. I'm a puppet. Putting your hand in my ass isn't sexual assault. It's just how puppets work. 
<laughs> the look on your face, Billy. What a maroon. <laughs> like you've been sexually assaulted by a puppet. That's ridiculous. It's not funny. You're right. I'm sorry. That was a mean joke to play. I shouldn't make fun of you. That's not what friends do. Friends? Of course, Billy. I'm your friend. Now lift me up and take a seat. We look the part, don't we, kid? We really do. So, what's our act gonna be? The open mic is tomorrow, and we don't have any time to rehearse. Don't worry about that, Billy. I'm magic, remember? I was cursed by a goblin's dick. A uh, wizard's ghost. Yeah, that. I I'm magic, and I've got years of showbiz experience. You don't need to do a dang thing but smile. Really? Trust me, kid. Now get some sleep. We've got a big day tomorrow. We're gonna bring the house down. Okay, sure. But... I need my hand back. Sure you do, Billy. Just slide it out. Ah, not the best! Oh, gee, Sloppy, I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah. It's just been a while, Billy. Been in that, in that box a while. Might take a bit of getting used to. Now, now get some sleep. We'll talk in the morning. Okay. Sloppy. Hey, uh, I'm gonna tell some jokes. What, what does a baby computer call his father? Dada? D Dada gets... Why, why did the pony have to gargle? Because he was a little horse? I'm kind of nervous about this, Sloppy. Don't worry about it, kid. Just take a seat, smile, and follow my lead. Say, do you have any boot polish? What? No. Why? I need to black up real quick so I can do my little shoeshine boy routine. Blackface? Are you kidding me? What, people don't like blackface anymore? Used to knock them dead back in 1930s Berlin. Uh, no. People don't like that. You can't start with this racist shit, all right? Who do you think you are? The president of Canada? Well, not to worry. I got a ton of material. Any dames in the audience? I got about a million time of the month jokes. Dames love time of the month jokes. No. You can't start with misogynistic crap either, sloppy. No racism? No misogyny? What do you people even do for fun anymore? Um, I don't know. Like, social media? Video games, paintballing. I don't know what any of those things are, but they sound pretty gay. Sloppy, don't be homophobic either. <sighs> okay, how about I do a little bit on the Jews? No. Catholics? Maybe. It depends. Muslims? Definitely no. Does comedy even exist in the future, Billy? Do people even have jokes anymore? No. I mean, yes, they do. It's just, we don't tell jokes that victimize people anymore. How the hell do you have jokes without victims? That's like having booze without driving. Sloppy, please promise me you're not going to say anything that's going to offend the audience, okay? No racism, no sexism, nothing like that, okay? Okay, kid, no problem. I promise I won't make fun of anyone in the audience. Why, why, where does an animal go uh, when it loses its tail? The retail store. The re, because the retail. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for your time. Woo, let's hear it for whoever that last guy was. Some white guy, I don't know, they all blend into one after a while. Anyway, please welcome our next act. You might know him as that guy who keeps showing up every week for some fucking reason. Put your hands together for Will Monroe.
Trust me, kid. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Sloppy. Introduction? Me? Why, surely these fine people have heard of Sloppy, ain't that right, guys? Jeez, tough crowd. Your last act must have really sucked balls, kid. Hey, I wasn't that bad. Not that bad. Not that bad. I heard you suck so bad you nearly put your mom out of business. You might not be cut out for showbiz, kid, but there are other career paths out there. I heard you bombed so hard the U.S. Navy is considering dropping you on the Middle East. Hey, you, you leave my mom out of this. She's a sweet lady. <laughs> Isn't he quick, folks? Only two lines behind. Let's give him a hand. No, really, folks. You see what I have to work with? I may be a dummy, but I'm a professional dummy. I expect a little professionalism. But did he put up posters? Did he get an ad out in the paper? Not even a promotional t-shirt. The only thing this kid is promoting is birth control. Hey, uh, I'm not, not pr promoting birth control. I mean, it's... It's fine, like, however you want to do, like, I... Kid, your only talent is sticking your hand up my ass, and I gotta say, I've had better. <laughs> Take us home, kid. Say goodnight, and for God's sakes, keep smiling. Uh, well, goodnight, folks. I, I hope you enjoyed the act. Fuck, I know I did. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell was that? That, my friend, was what you call bringing down the house. He said to trust you. Yeah, and it worked out great. But you said all those offensive things. Oh, yeah? And who did I offend? Well, me, I guess. Exactly. Self-deprecation, kid. It's the finest defense a comedian has. So your plan was just to make fun of me out there for ten minutes? Kind of, but so what? So what? So it's mean is what? Billy, my boy, think about this. Those rubes out there, they don't know I'm a sentient being, so what do they see? Me, operating a puppet, I guess. Exactly. Every laugh I get is attributed to you. Every time I make fun of you, they see a guy with the self-confidence to make fun of himself. And there's nothing more attractive than self-confidence, Billy. Audiences can smell that shit. You mean it? You think they really liked me? I mean, us? Kid, they thought we were the second coming. We were great out there. I don't know. I don't like the idea of just sitting up on stage while you make fun of me. You think Larry liked getting his ass handed to him by Mo? I'm gonna tell you something, Billy, and it's gonna be the most important thing anybody will ever tell you about show business. You've gotta sacrifice your dignity. Doesn't matter how weird looking you are, how good you are. You've gotta be ready to throw away everything you believe about yourself at the drop of a hat. You've gotta let that audience stick their hand up your ass as surely as you stick your hand up mine. We're all just dummies, kid, and we're all dancing on the end of a string. All right, I realize I mixed up my dummy types there, Billy, but I'm not a poet. I'm a magical talking puppet. All right. Well, carry on. But I don't want to be the butt of every joke, okay? I mean, you know, sometimes Larry gets to hit Mo every now and then, right? You're damn straight he does, Billy. Right now, this is all new to you. But pretty soon, we'll build up our act, work on our material, and you'll be getting just as many zingers as me. And the act will be better for it. We'll give him the old one, too. Gee golly, Sloppy. You mean it? Of course I do, Billy. It's like I keep saying. You have to trust me. Okay, Sloppy. You got it. And so we worked on our act. And before you knew it, I was feeling pretty good about things. So when the big night came, I was ready for anything. Or so I thought. How you feeling, kid? I feel great. 
I'm so happy right now. This is the best day of my life. That's my boy. Say, don't forget to drink your water. That's okay. I'm not thirsty right now. Trust me, Billy, once those stage lights hit you, you're going to start sweating like a Catholic priest at Chuck E. Cheese. Drink the water. Okay. You're probably right, Sloppy. Atta boy, Billy. Now let's get out there and knock him dead. Yeah, let's do it. You're my best friend. Did Dad have his camera? The fancy one, not his phone, right? Yeah, that's right, Sloppy. I told him to bring it, and not to miss anything, just like you asked. Nice. Now everybody get ready, because we've got something different for you. They're a new act, but they're already making some waves. Please put your hands together for Will Monroe and Sloppy! It's showtime. Did you hear that, folks? It's the mating call of the dipshit Apotamus. A little louder for the single ladies in the cheap seats. One of you lucky dames is going home with a winner tonight. <laughs> the party's over already, and I don't even remember dancing. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I... It's interactive, people. We're a 4D experience. The first two rows will get wet. <laughs> this, this isn't part of the show. I'm pooping! I'm pooping! Why am I pooping? Look at that, folks. He's shitting his pants and puking his guts out all at the same time. Don't let anyone tell you men can't multitask. Whee! I just feel it on my legs. Oh, now I'm peeing too. <laughs> <laughs> I love show business! <laughs> oh, thank God. It was all a dream. Not quite, Billy Boy. On the internet! You're a star! Three million views and counting! Who did this? I got all the footage just like you wanted. Dad? Well, how did you know? Oh, Sloppy came to me a while ago. Said he'd cut me in for 20% if I acted as your manager. Why would you do this to me? 20% will. This video is monetized. I already made more money in a day than I make at the office an entire year. We're gonna be rich. But... I don't wanna shit myself on the internet! <laughs> you said you wanted to be famous. A big name on the stage. Not like this. Kevin, would you give us a minute, please? Kid, I'm feeling a little ingratitude here. I just gave you your dreams on a plate. This isn't a dream. It's a nightmare! Why? Because you made a fool of yourself on stage? You want to know the difference between a clown everyone laughs with and a clown everyone laughs at, Billy? 
The difference is one makes bank and the other commits suicide. It's not just about the money. Ain't it? You think all those 9 to 5 fuckwits turning up at their insignificant office jobs wouldn't kill to have fuck you money for 10 minutes of being humiliated? But you, Billy, you get to be one of the lucky ones. But it's... it's... undignified. Have you been on the internet, Billy? Have you seen what these people worship? They make gods out of the worst, most vapid, most mind-numbingly tedious pricks out there, and you're worried about your dignity? You don't get it, Billy. You still think you're part of their world. But you're a celebrity now. Say it. I'm a celebrity? Louder. I'm a celebrity. Damn right. <laughs> now be a good kid and drink your laxatives. We got another show at 8 tonight and we don't want to disappoint our audience. So I got my dream. I was famous after all. Every night I went on stage, and every night people laughed and laughed and laughed. Cool story, bro. Shame it didn't fucking happen. Well, I might have changed a few things just to make it scarier. What the fuck was so scary about that? Yeah, I mean, my mom shat on the camera all the time and ain't nobody got her a spot on the true men show. <laughs> Don't you guys get it? It's about a kid who got drugged up and exploited to make some asshole rich. It's like a metaphor for like the entire entertainment industry. It's like an E true Hollywood story for like a really good lifetime. Yeah, sure is nothing scarier than fame, money, and free drugs. Excuse me while I piss my pants. You guys just don't get it. Well, maybe your subtext wasn't handled in a way that resonated with your target audience. <laughs> Ulick has a point, Will. Whatever. I didn't actually take the deal anyway. I made that last part up. Put that puppet away. Put Sloppy in the attic. Locked him in a suitcase. Vigorously duct taped it for hours. That's where he belongs. What? You did shit yourself live on stage, correct? That I did do, and uh, I got I definitely got the biggest laugh. <laughs> it does sound pretty hilarious. <laughs> Where the fuck is Scout Leader Gary? He'll be here soon. He's probably down at Jags right now, six beers deep, about to pull his penis out any minute. We'll get him out of there. Damn it. I'm starving. All right, you know what, Darnell, it's your turn. What do you mean, my turn? Come on. You're from the black neighborhood. Gotta have a ton of scary stories, right? I'm from Koreatown. Your city is the only one in the country with a drive through abortion clinic. Do not come talking to me about scary shit. My daddy met my mama at that clinic. Tell the story, Darnell. Shut her up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I got one for you. And I know this one is true because it happened to me. You guys remember Clyde, right? My adopted brother? You remember that summer I spent out of town? Yeah, yeah, I remember you not being here and me not giving a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wasn't going to tell anyone that story because I figured nobody was going to believe me. But believe me when I say, college life, out of this world.
Darnell, open up this door. You cannot stay in there all day. Darnell, we have things to do. We have things to plan for. We have things to make and make people happy. If you don't open up the store, I'm gonna have Smasher knock it down. If you don't open up this door, I'm gonna call mom. You're not really gonna call mom, are you? Oh, there you are. Yes, I will in fact call mom because she's the one that said I have to babysit your ass all weekend. So if calling mom is what fixes this problem, I'm gonna call mom. You need to understand that the Beer Olympics is something that Omicron Phi... Omicron Phi! Hell yeah, buddy. Omicron Phi is what we do every year. We put on the biggest party, we make a lot of people happy, and we have a massive reputation to maintain. We cannot, cannot lose that reputation. Because when Omicron Phi... Omicron Phi! Absolutely, pal. We are known as the party princes of campus. So... Get dressed, come downstairs, mingle, and have a good time. And stop making me look bad. Fine, I'll be down. Whoa, 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 not like that, buddy. You look like a lumberjack dolomite. I'm gonna need you to put on some other clothes, like that pink polo I bought you for Christmas and I know for a fact mom packed it for you. So you put that on, you take your time, and then please come downstairs and be normal-ish. It's all I ask. All right. Let's make these beer Olympics happen. Exactly two hours and 53 minutes until party time begins. Hey, Denim Tony, is the grill on? You got it, boss. Fantastic. Hey, Smooth Tony, how's that beer run coming? Hags are chilling in the back. I'll go check on them. Tony, out. Aces. Hey, Hot Tony, you make sure you crank that AC real low so that it's nice and cool when the sororities arrive. As we all know, Hot Tony has that horrible sweating condition. I just want the AC to be low for his comfort because I care about it. Hipster Tony was going to set up the sound system, but as we all know, Hipster Tony died yesterday. And we got German Tony and Siberian Tony being the bouncers tonight, being good boys. Yes, they are. All right. So now all we got to do is get stuff to get... Who are they? And how did they get inside the house? They might, they're probably just foreign exchange students. We'll be nice, we'll be nice. Hey, can we help you with anything? What's that good word? Hepcats. What's crack a lacking? Big dog! Uh, are you guys from out of town? Totally, Betty. Where from way out there? Just thought we'd mosey on down, scope out the happenings, and see what's going on. Uh, okay, well, uh, later tonight, uh, we're going to be having a party. So if you want to come back, Back later at 8 p.m., I guarantee you're gonna have a great time. Okay, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, can, can I get you guys anything? Uh, no, we're like. Happy to park, right? Here, bitch. Totally zen! 
No! Problemo! No. Problemo! Well, hey, I have a great idea. My little brother is upstairs right now. I'm sure he would love to show you around the house. So how about if you go up there right now and he'll take care of you, okay? Guests should start arriving, uh, any minute now. Uh, so long as we stick to the plane, everything's gonna be fine, though, right? Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. <sighs> My plan's perfect. Omicron Pi will once again be the party princes of Party Town. Party princes! Yes. Yes, my friend. And we will... Wait, where the hell is Darnell? Is he still upstairs? I probably shouldn't have sent two strangers upstairs with my brother who is a child to a room that I have no supervision of. Maybe we should check on him. Let's go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck is going on here? Hey, hey Clyde, check this out. Check this out. What the shit? Are you guys from Europe? Lay chili, home slice. Everything smelling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you drinking with him? Don't you know that he's a minor? Uh, like for minerals? Oh yeah, real fucking funny douchebag. You know what? You need to get the fuck out of my house before I call campus security. But we were invited. Does not your people's customs say that we are guests in your domicile? My people's customs say for you to get the fuck out of my house whenever I ask you to get the fuck out of my house. So you know what? Fuck this, Smasher. You show them the way out. <laughs> Mellow cannot be harshed by your popo. We must not be hassled by your pigs. What the fuck? What did you do to Smasher? He is laying chili. Laying chili. Fuck this. I, I, I'm gonna call the cops. Whoa, I, I thought we were cool. We are extremely cool, but we cannot be apprehended by your Gmail. Peace. We out. Don't follow us. God, why are you so satisfied? Whoa, 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 please, please don't, please don't kill my little brother. My mother would be slightly upset with me. Darnell! Darnell! Oh, we'll save you! We'll save you, Darnell! <laughs> what I do? What I do? I'm not good when things go go in plan! I'm not good at new situations! Smasher! Smasher, please wake up! I need you, man! I need you! Are... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, uh... Feeling quite refreshed, actually. Are you sure you sound different? Well, I'm 100% Clyde, but I'm starting to think those two weren't exchange students. Well, they took Darnell. Where to? I, I, I don't know. They, they put that crazy taser thing to his head and dragged him out of here. 
Well, we know their weapon is non-lethal, so we should probably go after them and call 5-0 on the way. What's 5-0? The police? Yeah, yeah, come on, let's go! Hey, you hold it right there! Yeah, I want to report a kidnapping! Never mind. <laughs> Holy shit, did you see that? Incredible. It just vanished. Like some kind of teleportation device. That's impossible! Well, it's certainly far beyond the capabilities of any human technology, that's for certain. What are you suggesting? Wait, why are you talking like that? Honestly, I don't know. But it would seem like my expanded vocabulary is secondary in our immediate priorities. What? We have to find your brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I actually, I have a GPS device on his phone. I can track him with this. It says he's just a couple miles away. Well, let's stop wasting time and let's go. You're right. Hey, four-door sedan, Tony. We need your four-door sedan. I'm going to check my news feed for any unexplained phenomena. You know, like any UAPs or atmospheric disturbances. I don't know what those things are, Smasher. All I know is that I need to follow the GPS, which tells me to keep going down this road, I think maybe for two miles. I don't know. Also, why do you keep talking like that? Ever since you got hit with that ray gun, you've been sounding like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Well, I can only conclude that the weapon used against me contained some kind of electrical charge, which by coincidence or intention, disrupted the neural connections within my brain. Electricity. Oh, okay. Wait, but would that even work? There have been reports of men awakening from head injuries with the ability to speak French. The mind is a wonderful, complex, and mysterious entity. <laughs> but, but you can still punch things, right? Because I might really need you to punch something. Clyde, you've always been my day one. If you need my support in the just application of violence, I'm ready for the smoke. Wait, wait, I think, I think this is where we need to be. Let's try pulling in here. I'm sure nothing weird is going to happen. This doesn't make any sense. My phone says it should be right here on this spot. Unless... What the fuck?! Where the fuck are we?! I'll tell you where you are, Earthman. You're on my ship. Earthman? What are you- Hey! You two! Where the fuck is Darnell?! Luke, that's him. That's the man who threatened to manhandle us and turn us into the authorities. What? You kidnapped my brother! Only to ensure our safety as we tried to escape. Or you would have left him had you not followed. You shot Smasher in the head! He seems fine to me. Well, he's not! You did something to him! He's smart now! I am so sorry, my man. I just realized how dickish that sounded. It's cool. I understand you're under a lot of stress. Is that why you aggressively chased our companions? Because we inadvertently increased the cognitive capacity of your companion? Yes! No! Where the fuck is Darnell? Guys? I don't know what's going on, but I think someone put something in my drink. Come here, Darnell! We are leaving! Oh, 
You think you're leaving. That's right. We're leaving right out that door over there. So open it up, motherfucker. As you wish. Holy shit, we're in space. We are in space! Can't say I'm surprised, Clyde. The unlikely technology, them not understanding our ways, the teleportation, it all correlates. You people are aliens? You didn't know. You threatened to turn us into the authorities. Yeah, because you were fucking up my party, not because... Wait, why aren't you talking weird anymore? Before we based our language patterns on a myriad of popular Earth programming. But since we've had the opportunity to scan your brother's brainwaves, we've had a better understanding for speech patterns that are most suitable for your time and location. You scanned my little brother? Yes. Joe, did you find anything weird in there? The fuck, man? Nothing more than we'd expect to find from your kind. Look, Bluke, is it? I'm not buying it. You people aren't aliens. This isn't a spaceship. I mean, you look like some cheap knockoff villains from Super Sentai. Look, clearly there's been a grave misunderstanding. We had no idea you guys were aliens, and we had no intention of disrupting whatever your purpose is. Uh, no serious injuries been done to either party, so if you could just send us back to our world, we'll pretend this never happened. I don't think they'd believe us anyway. I'm sorry, but we can't do that. You would most certainly tell your authorities, and we know you are a very warlike people. He's got a point. Shut up, Darnell! <laughs> well... Hear me out here. Here's my plan. What if we pinky promise we won't tell anyone? Your species and culture are also notoriously duplicitous. Whoa, dude. You can't judge a person by their species and or culture. Why not? It seems like an entirely practical precaution to take. Because it is profiling and profiling sucks. Profiling comes from a place of privilege. You should check your privilege. Perhaps they do have honor and decency, Blue. We know from their broadcast they at least believe in the concept. Alas, we have no way to know, and I cannot jeopardize the security of our mission. Well, your people have to have some sort of justice system, some way to measure integrity, a trial by jury, perhaps? We, like most enlightened species, have moved past the primitive need for law enforcement. There is the right of Plexu. Yeah, um, what he said, the, the right of Plexu. Are you sure? I fear you would only be delaying your fate. Just, just tell us what it is, man. As we have invoked the right, you may choose a game. How you perform in the game will tell us all we need to know. Win, and you win your freedom. Lose, and you remain here with us, where we can keep an eye on you for the rest of your natural lifespan. And we get to pick the game? Yes. Fucking Beer Olympics, dude. A pentathlon of beer related activities that test one's strength and skill. All or nothing. We find your terms acceptable. Don't, don't you need us to explain the game? One round flip club, one round keg walk, one round shot, one round dizzy bat, and one round beer pong. You guys know all that? We, and others like us, have long since abandoned the need for medical and technological advancement. Our mission is to merely experience the universe. 
For a century or more, my crew and I have visited countless thousands of cultures for the express purpose of studying and partaking in the myriad celebration rites. We have partied on a million worlds. Do you really think that a kegger holds any surprises for us? Please. Your species travels the universe in search of parties? Can you think of a better use for advanced space travel? Actually, no. I don't care how many demons and how many hells you party with. You've never partied with Omicron 5. Omicron 5! There's my man. Very well. We will give you one of your Earth hours to prepare. Which coincidentally is exactly one of our own hours. Do it. <sighs> okay. We need to get back to the Tonys. Darnell! Get... It doesn't look like he took that second teleportation too well. Wow. I did not know the human body could hold that much vomit. He is just still going and going and going. This is sad and weird. You know what? Let's just leave him here in the middle of the field by himself. I'm sure he'll get better. If we win, I'll tell him the whole story in detail later. Good idea. Let's go. Let's go. Wake up, guys! Clyde, dude, where you been? You missed the party. Whatever you experienced, Denim Tony, was not a party. That was a pregame. I definitely partied. Look, men, and fellow Tonys, we have a new enemy to take on that has challenged us. Now, I know that you have all partied hard, but I need you to pull yourselves up and refocus so that we can take this enemy down together. Sir, respectfully, we've already been going all night. What chance do we, we really have? Don't you worry about that. We're gonna go in, we're a team, we got nothing to worry about. We're gonna go in, we're gonna conquer, we're gonna kick ass, all right? Understand that? Everyone understood that? Yeah? All right, all right. Ready up, ready up. Understood? All right, on the ready line, on the ready line. All right, Tony. All right, move it out, sweethearts, on the ready line. Come on, are you lean? Yeah. Are you yeah. lean? Yeah. 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 What are yeah. you? On the ready line. On the ready line, God damn it! Move it out, move it out, move it out, move it out, move it out! Move it out. Ah, absolutely badasses! Say it! We drink a party and you party! Go, 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 You know, Smasher, I honestly have no idea how we got everyone in this house just named Tony. Every day I'm thankful that you're not named Tony just so I have another name to say. Clyde, you do know my real name isn't Smasher, right? But even your parents call you Smasher. Yeah, I go by that moniker to make things a little less confusing around here. You mean... it too, Tony? Oh, let's not dwell on it. How does that even happen? Oh, it's short for Anthony. I get it now.
I don't know. These people have been all over the universe. Who knows how many galaxies they've been to? But statistically speaking, some species, some planet, are the biggest partiers. Someone gets more drunk and parties harder than any other species, than any other planet in this universe. Why not Earth? Why not us? Why can't we be party central? Let the games begin! This is it, Bluke. It comes down to you and me. You can't psych me out, Earthman. I partied on Nemecron 5 during the Blento cycle. I don't know what half of those words mean, but I do know that I partied in Jacksonville at spring break. Twice. Let's begin. You've done well so far, Bloog, my friend. 
but it looks to me like the crowd is getting a bit bored. What say we go to sudden death? One throw each, winner takes all. And if we both miss? Then the Beer Olympics is a draw, and we both down a pitcher of beer. You guys stay here, I'll get your pictures. You put on a good show, Earthman. You party well. Thank you, Bluke. As do you. It was an honor to go against you in battle. And you showed honor. Perhaps there's hope for your species yet. Do you think maybe one day we could be up there in those stars with you? Perhaps one day you'll join us. But not in your lifetime. Tonys may not know what was at stake, but I certainly do. Gotta thank you, Clyde. I wouldn't want to put my life in the hands of a better man. <sighs> well, what can I say? The reputation of Omicron Phi was at stake. Omicron Phi! I wanted to tell you first. I've been talking with Zip Zip and her crew. Since they zapped me, since my mind has been freed, I man, I can't stop thinking about what's out there. So much to learn, so much to see. What do you mean, man? Clyde, you've given me the best years of my life. But college isn't forever. So I'm going up with Blue's crew. Do you, do you mean like as a passenger? Mm, think of it more like an exchange student. That one? Can I have the weird guy? It's fine. It's fine. We will accept her with open arms. I know you'll take good care of her. Just like you took good care of me. Do you think we have a little bit of time to look at the stars together before you go? Absolutely, brother. Hey, where's Darnell? I don't care. Monster face! Aliens. Yeah. You're trying to tell me you got kidnapped by aliens. Hey man, UFOs are real. Don't let anyone tell you different. I gotta admit, I find this story more believable than Jimmy being a badass. Fuck you. Well, you know, my daddy says that college is for Pinko common libtards. I don't know what a pinto is. You really gotta stop listening to your dad. Don't you have a restraining order against him? Yep. But then again, my daddy says ain't no pencil neck college boy gonna tell him how to beat his kids. <laughs> Jesus, this is supposed to be scary, but it's just it's depressing. And it clearly didn't fucking happen. What? You don't believe me? Well, I believe the part where you puked your guts out. Hey. Joke on a dick. Screw this. I'm ordering a pizza. Hey, wait for Scout Leader Gary. We're supposed to be out there in the mountains catching our own food. Only thing we're catching out here is hypothermia. But hey, don't forget the cheese sticks, dude. Way ahead of you, man. God, you're a bunch of pussies. Are you saying don't want cheese sticks? Dude, of course I want cheese sticks. Come on, don't be stupid. Wait, ain't it my turn? To 
tell a story. It's my turn, ain't it? You know, when we say telling scary stories, we don't mean just like any old day in a trailer park. <laughs> oh, no, no, I got the story. I got the story. It's a genuine, supernatural tale full of magic and shit. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and the best part is I know it's true because it happened to me. Does anybody have a number for, like, a social worker? It was an ordinary day at the Scented Pines Community Park. Honey. Sorry, sweetie. Toby ain't here today. I sent him out to run some errands. Oh, oh no, Mrs. Black. I'm not here to talk to Toby. Actually, I came to you today with a uh, business proposition. <laughs> oh, are you selling Girl Scout cookies or something? Well, not exactly, Mrs. Black. See, my daddy can't um really go to the bathroom at the truck stop no more and work there, so we don't really have a reliable source of income. But my daddy said if we want to make some money real fast, I just got to sell some drugs. Well, be as that may, why does that bring you to my door? Well, my daddy said the fastest way to make money selling drugs was by talking to the blacks. Oh, sweetie, do you know what a racist is? Shoot, sure, these them ghosts that are mad about everybody taking their jobs, ain't it? Ah. <laughs> no, honey, your daddy's a racist, and you ought not listen to much of what he has to say. Besides, dealing drugs ain't no job for a pretty girl like you. You should be getting yourself prettied up for your future husband, or a John, or a pole at Judd's Tits and Wings. Oh, is that why you made yourself all pretty, Mrs. Black? For your husband. <laughs> oh, heavens no, darling. My husband's working long hours today. Trust me. Get yourself a man who works long hours. I just have someone coming by to, um, check on my pipes. Um, what's that there man in your yard? That thing? I picked him up at a yard sale, and it freaked Toby out. Look at the tape on his mouth and stuff. Toby thinks he's talking to him, but Toby ain't been quite right since we switched up his medications. Say, Buick, how would you like to earn yourself a dollar? A dollar? Oh, oh, yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. You ain't one of those molesters, are you? Because my daddy says I shouldn't let anybody put a finger at me for less than five. What? Jeez, no, kid. You take that gnome to the dump, and I will give you a dollar for your troubles. How does that sound? Yes, ma'am. I'll do that right away for you. Bye, ma'am. And I hope that that there man fixes your pipes real good. So do I, kid. So do I. Hey. You're not so bad. Hmm. Kind of cute, even. Got a big old ass, though. Now, I don't live too far from the county dump, so this was shaping up to be the easiest dollar I ever made. But then, the strangest thing happened. I thought I heard that little gnome make a sound. D-A-D-D-Y, that is the name I love to cry. Ah, thank Christ. Dude, I haven't brushed my teeth in six days. My mouth was starting to taste like Rush Limbaugh's taint. Don't even ask me how I know that. You can talk? Nah, you're just having a psychotic episode. Must be all the stress you're under from being an unemployed redneck. Hey, don't you be rude now. I already made a dollar today, I'll have you know. Sure, kid. You're a real go-getter. A regular Henry Ford. 
Look, can you get the rest of this fucking tape off me? Well, okay. Hey, wait a minute. How come you're all taped up in the first place? Because that crybaby bitch Toby doesn't know a good business deal when he sees one. That's why. Now, can you help a guy out here or what? Well, I guess so, but you have to tell me how come you can talk. Fine, fuck, whatever. It was a simple operation. They used garden gnomes to smuggle cocaine across the border. I mean, what else are garden gnomes for, right? Anyway, it was a pretty good plan until the cops got wind of it and everyone got shot down. We all got rounded up, except for me. I got left behind. But being filled up to the brim with cocaine and all, it wasn't long before I got picked up. That's where things got real weird. A crazy old witch lady called Madame Wanda picked me up, and she used her creepy powers to bring me to life. Gave me a name and everything. Called me Dusty. You'd think that's a good thing, right? Wrong. She made me her slave, and that bitch had some weird needs she needed me to meet, if you know what I mean. The horny old broad was all over me like a leech on a newborn baby. But that wasn't the strangest thing. When she brought me to life with her magic, the cocaine I had hidden in my guts, it became part of me. After that, whenever I ate enough, I'd shit pure cocaine. And Madame Wanda liked to get her fixed straight from the source, by which I mean my asshole. If I hadn't got stolen by some meth head, I'd still be trapped there now, jammed hard way up that crazy bitch's meat hole. So for now, I've been laying low so she doesn't find me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Dusty. You're telling me cocaine comes out your butt? Yeah, I shit cocaine. What's it to you? Well, that is a wonderful coincidence. I'm just trying to find some drugs to sell, and I don't have any. I mean, I don't know any black people. Wow, kid. That's a fucked up worldview you got there. Don't they deprogram people like you? Forget about it. Look, here's what we'll do. You obviously don't know shit about selling drugs, so how about you and me be business partners? Oh boy, business partners! Wait a minute, if you already shot that cocaine, then <laughs> what do you need me for? Because I'm a gnome, idiot. I, I mean, sweetheart. I can't be seen walking around that put me in a fucking zoo. I need you to be the face of this operation. With my brains and magical cocaine shitting abilities and your unassuming blank expression, We'll make an unstoppable team. So what do you say? Partners? Okay, partners. Oh, well, I guess you can't. Yeah, partners. <laughs> okay, first thing we gotta do is get me something to eat. Otherwise, I won't be able to shit for shit. Oh, that's okay. I got plenty of food in my house. It's just some dry cat food, but you know, once you fatten it, you swirl around a little bit, it's wet as can be. Like porridge is good. Nah, I, I got a special diet. I'll tell you what, why don't you drop me back off at that fucking bitch, I mean, Mrs. Black's place. I left a lot of my special diet food there. Sure, that sounds totally vague and reasonable. Heard you was looking for a handyman? Sorry, lady, but a man's gotta eat. I scream and cry at night, but nobody can hear me except for my daddy. He says I'll die alone unless he's by my side. La 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 la. <laughs> hey, hey, that was fast. Well, I was real hungry, sweetheart. Yeah, um. What's all that around your mouth? That? Oh, that's cherry pie. Oh, cherry pie, man, I love cherry pie. Can I have some? Sorry, sweetheart, I ate all of it, even the bones. What? Never mind, here, take one of these. What's this for? I'm busting my guts here. I gotta shit immediately. In to this bag? Of course. What, do you want me to shit pure uncut cocaine onto the ground? For fuck's sake, open the bag. Okay, okay. Ah, there it is. The old white snake. Come on, don't be shy. Ah, I gotta tell you, it's like being born again. 
Gonna have to light a match out after this one. I don't even care that we're outside. Ugh. Wow, that's sure a lot of nose candy. I is it worth a lot? Sweetheart, there are people who would put their own grandmother in a wood chipper for that much nose candy. Like, 20 bucks worth, or... Just go knock on that trailer over there and ask if they want to buy drugs. All right, well, um, are you sure that they're going to want to buy any of this? Trust me, sweetheart. You live in a godforsaken shithole like this, you want to buy drugs. Now, keep it simple, like this. Hi, my name's Buick. Do you like drugs? Then I've got a feeling you're going to like what I have to offer. And I'd like to add that all of our proceeds go toward helping a little girl save her family. Okay. Fuck you want. Judge Judy's on. Hi, sir. Do you like feeling little girls? Sure, come on in. Uh, sorry, no. <laughs> Rewind. What I really meant to say was, um, you, you want to buy this bag of drugs? Sure, how much you want for it? Uh, One million dollars. I got, uh, two bucks and some vouchers for some hot dog place. Oh, shoot, okay, it's a deal. Pleasure doing business with you. Oh, thank you. You really don't know how much this means to me. Thank you for your patronage. Dusty! Dusty! Dusty, he bought it all! All of it? Holy shit, how much money did he give you? Two whole dollars and wiener vouchers! What? You dumb fuck! Do you know how much that guy ripped you off? Didn't anyone ever teach you basic economics? Well, wasn't that when they taught us how to get milk from our mamas? I, mean, I didn't have a mama, so I had to use daddy. Jesus, okay, never mind. Don't worry about it. This is all probably just a misunderstanding, okay? Okay. Well, do you think I should just go back in there and talk with him? Nah, let me do that. See that window there? Throw me through. Are you sure, Dusty? Oh, won't that hurt you? Nah, I'm hard as a rock, sweetheart. It'll be a fun surprise for the guy. Now, come on, quickly now. Okie dokie! <laughs> Not so tough without your fingers, are you? Please, I, I don't know who you are. Take take whatever you want. Oh, I don't want much. Just your soul. D sure, do I have to sign like a contract or something? If only it were that simple. Sadly, I must consume your living flesh. Well, d actually, I do have a problem with that. <laughs> what kind of sorry sack of shit steals cocaine from a little girl? Wait, this is about the coke? It's right there. Please take it. Oh, I'll take it, all right. Along with your soul. Please, Mr. Gnome, I don't want to die. But first, I'm going to take a big powdery dump. No! Wait. What? Oh, yeah. There it goes. Is that... Is that Coke? There's more where that came from. Wow. How can one little elf shit so much cocaine? Who the fuck are you calling an elf? I'm a gnome, motherfucker. Wait, please, I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Lick my ass. Wait, what? You heard me, pork chop. Lick it clean. Or do I have to eat your dick off? No, 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 no. All right, all right. I'll do it. Good. Pick me up and point me toward that picture on the wall. Who is that? That's my mother. Mom's got a great rack on her. Does she live here too? She died three weeks ago. Ha! <laughs> That's perfect. When you meet her in a few minutes, you can tell her the last thing you did before you died was lick a gnome's asshole while he whacked off to her. She'll be so proud. Mm. Mm. That's it. Get up in the hole. Oh, yeah. Mm. The good coke's deeper up in there. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ugh. Mm. Okay, I'm done. Stop licking my ass now. 
I said that's enough. Mm. Uh, sorry. I got carried away. Well, it's weird now. Put me down. Uh, you weren't kidding about the good coke being deep up in there. Oh, if I hadn't lost so much blood, I'd be hard as a rock right now. You know, I didn't think I'd be able to hit the picture from this far back, but damn if I didn't squirt right on the bitch's face. That was a pretty good shot. Say, you're not still gonna murder me, are you? You know, since we, like, bonded? Oh yeah, I'm totally gonna murder you. You can spend your last few minutes watching gnome jizz drip down your dead mom's face. I'd probably feel a lot worse about that if it wasn't for the coke I just sniffed out of your asshole. My dad beats me, doo, 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 cause I look like mama, doo, doo, doo. these jokes are for sick fucks. Good news! Hey, you're back! I got our cocaine back. He just gave you the whole thing? Sure. Once I explained the mistake, he was more than happy to make amends. Oh, and um, did you have another cherry pie? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I sure did eat that cherry pie. And you didn't save me any? Why are you always giving me shit about cherry pie? When's the last time you ate? I don't know. What day is it? What? Jesus Christ, kid. We need to get you some food. What say we take a trip into town and put those wiener vouchers to good use? Really? <laughs> you mean it? Sure. I can't have my business partner dying of malnutrition on me, now can I? Okie dokie, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> now I ain't never had no man buy me dinner before on account of my daddy telling me that he'd straight up murder any boy who tried to take me away from him. But Dusty weren't no boy. He was my business partner and the most generous man I ever did meet. Oh, it was my first time in a fancy, dancy, prancy, sancy, mancy restaurant. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Put My Vina in Your Mouth, the finest vinas you'll ever have in your mouth. My name is Esophagus Penetrator. Oh, wow, that's an unusual name. <laughs> it's great. Oh, and little girl, you know, we don't usually let miners in here, but it is a slow day, so I won't tell anyone, yeah? And such handsome little friend. Yeah, that there's Dusty. Dusty? How butch. Now, would you like one of my venas in your mouth? Mm. I'll have two, please. DP, eh? I can dig it. And how do you take it? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Well, do you like your venas with condiments? Or do you like to slide them in dry? I'll take with condiments, please. <laughs> Safety first. I can dig it. And would you like to swallow some fluids as well? I love a soda, yeah. Syrupy on sticky. I can dig it. Okay then, I will have your venus coming soon. But not too soon. Well, he sure was friendly, huh? <laughs> oh, he was friendly, all right. You know, Dusty, this is probably the nicest thing that anybody's ever done for me. Ain't nothing nice about it. We earn those wiener vouchers together. That's what business is. You do the work, you reap the rewards. Yeah. You know, I never thought I'd be a big-time drug dealer or nothing. I mean, I never even went to college. This is America, sweetheart. Anyone can make it here as long as you're willing to make sacrifices. Here you go, little girl. I have Venus for you. I hope their length on girt is sufficient. Jeez, these are huge. <laughs> Look at how big these wieners are, Dusty. I've never seen one this big. <laughs> it pleases me to hear you say that. 
And now for the matter of the bill. Oh, of course. Uh, I got these from my first day on the job. Here you go. I'm sorry, little girl, but these promotional vouchers are very much past their expiration date. Oh, no. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Uh, um, I could, I could always clean dishes for you in the back or, or, or clean tables or mop floors. I'm really hungry. I, I, I'll do whatever you need. A certain requirement for an alternative form of payment. I can dig that. Perhaps your butch little friend here can help me in the kitchen? Well, I would have to talk to him about it. But of course, I'll be waiting out back. Alone. Well, what do you say, Dusty? You wanna roll up those sleazy ears and go help that man out back? Don't worry about a thing, sweetheart. I know exactly how to take care of that guy. Well, hello there, little man. Oh, my God! Not so little! Oh! Ah! Ah! Well, your little friend here is full of surprises. Consider the Venus on the house. Come back anytime. What did you do to that man? I told you, I took care of him. Did you have homosexual sex with that man? I don't like labels, kid. If you think that's the first guy who wanted to put his dick in a garden gnome, you are way off. My daddy says that all the homosexuals are gonna go to hell. <sighs> Somebody has to tell you this, sweetheart, and it may as well be me. Your dad's full of shit. I mean, don't you get it? The straight white conservative lifestyle hasn't exactly done you any favors, has it? So where do you get off judging other people? Yeah. I guess you're right. I guess having homosexual sex with that waiter man for free hot dogs isn't as bad as what I thought you were gonna do. I thought you were gonna kill him like you did with those other people. Uh, what? Kill me? I, oh, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Dusty. Look, I know I'm not the smartest girl in the world, but I know what martyr is. I know that you killed Mrs. Black and that fat old dude because you had to eat him so that you could shit out cocaine. Well, I guess you got me, kid. So, where do we go from here? You gonna call the cops? <laughs> Heck no! Shoot, everybody knows that you can't call the cops on your friends, no, no matter how many people they martyr and kill and eat for cocaine. It's all right. It's like you said, who am I to judge what other people do? Uh, yeah, sure. That's exactly what I meant by that. You know, sweetheart, you really are a good kid. And if you ain't careful, this world is going to eat you alive as surely as I ate your neighbors and that waiter's dick. You can only be you, just like I can only be me, I guess. That's right, and that's why we have to take care of each other. Now, finish your wieners and let's get out of here and sell some drugs. Uh. Deal! <laughs> but make it quick and get a baggie ready, because I have got to take a massive shit. Dusty and I never looked back after that. It was a big, scary world out there, and not everyone in it was nice. But, as Dusty liked to say, nobody bats an eye at dog eat dog. So why should they care about a gnome eating a redneck? I ain't much for moral philosophizing. All I knew was that as long as we had each other, 
it'd always be okay. thought you said that actually happened to you. Yeah. You eloped with a bisexual killer known that shit's cocaine. Sure. You are you sure this didn't happen to you after you like inhaled a lot of bleach or something? Probably. <laughs> Don't mean that it ain't true, right? <laughs> Man, screw this. I hate being a cooter scout. I hate camping, I hate telling ghost stories, and I'm not gonna lie, I kinda hate all you guys. You know, it pains me to say this, but I'm with Jimmy. When Scout Leader Gary gets back, we should just probably ask him to take us all home. Isn't that him now? Is that son of a bitch drunk again? He's got strippers with him? Seriously? There's no way this guy isn't on some kind of sex offender list. Guys, he doesn't look so good. I think he went with the bath salts this time. No, we've seen that one before. This is different. You know what? Fuck this. Daddy, I love him. Not in that way! What the fuck is going on out there? Zombies toots. A whole ass load of the undead. What are we gonna do? I don't wanna die a virgin. Nobody's dying on my watch. And no one's going home a virgin. Who are you? The name's Jimmy Headshot. Now, if you aren't too busy undressing me with your eyes, I could use a little help suiting up.
I'd been training all my life for that day. The others mocked me, said I was wasting my time on a ridiculous fantasy. But in that moment, I truly became Jimmy Headshot, Slayer of the Undead. <laughs> yeah. Man, will you stop with that bullshit? What bullshit? Again, none of that happened. Dude, it might have. Well, my daddy says <laughs> an overindulgent and adolescent wish fulfillment tends to lead to an arrest in emotional development, which leads to relationship problems in later life. No, you know what? Fuck all you assholes. You guys think you're better than me, but we all know that when shit goes down, it's people like me you call. Well, well yeah. When I need help cleaning jizz out of a keyboard, you'll be the first guy I call. Is that Scout Leader Gary? Is that son of a bitch drunk again? Wait, guys. What if he's a zombie? For Pete's sake, Jimmy. Will you grow up? We're not 15 and a half anymore. Right? Scary stories aren't real. They're just urban legends. Everybody knows that. Yeah, man. We don't believe any of this. We just tell it for laughs. Not like any of it happened, really. Hey, kids. Sorry I'm late, but you're not gonna believe what I found. Where have you been? We've been waiting for hours! Yeah, yeah, but trust me. I bumped into this guy, and he's got a killer business opportunity for the Cooter Scouts. I mean, seriously. All our financial problems are over. Kids, say hello to my new business partner. Hiya, fuckers! <laughs> this ain't no fairy tale. I'm not at the point of delusion. I make a point of controlling what you know and what you don't. What do you mean, another movie, Sloppy? Isn't all the money gone? It's great. Steve only used like a thousand bucks to make this schlock. He saved the rest to secretly shoot a second Shingles movie with his own script. I'm surprised that hack could think ahead. Do the authors and dragons know? Nope. It's a secret. Sloppy v. Dusty. Advent of Just Us. It's gonna be a great emotional film that won't be misunderstood at all. Wow. I bet everyone will love it. Sounds great to me. How do we get this done? There's only one way. Dusty, you're gonna have to put your head in my ass. <laughs>